Hello and welcome back to Kata West Shoujo. Uh, we got we got roped into going and doing some extra student council work with Shizune and uh, learned a little bit that Misha and Shizune are having a fight. And now uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Hopefully learn more about what that fight's all about. The next day, I walk up to my usual vending machine at lunch only to find that it's out of my favorite drink. Secreted so far away from the most of the classrooms between a storeroom and the library, it's not like no one knew about it. I'd expected a vending machine so close to the library to be booming with customers, but then again, the library is empty most of the time, and anyone who goes there is only doing it to look for stuff to pad a paper with. No one stays there longer than they absolutely have to. For the past month, it's been working in my, out in my favor, but the trade-off with a vending machine no one knows about is that it's never restocked. Settling for a can of orange soda, I decide to drink it here instead of waiting until I get to the cafeteria when the library door opens next to me. Uh, I've been looking for you. Yuko seems to be acting a lot more assertive than usual today, although it isn't enough to keep her from going back to mumbling immediately afterwards. Return your books, please. I mean, the library books. The books you checked out are really overdue. Some of them are on waiting lists. Oops, I forgot. I keep checking out new ones and forget to return the old ones. That happens to me all the time at the university library. It's so embarrassing. Did they send someone to try to get you to bring them back? No, the university library is bigger. They don't notice if I happen to borrow something longer than normal. It's convenient because their, proper, their policy on keeping the books too long is really strict. Stricter than here. I like how despite what she said, Yuko has no problem with borrowing books for longer than she is supposed to anyway. It makes her being so on top of my own lateness a little hypocritical. It takes a thief, I guess. She's not stealing them. She give them back. Catching on to the meaning of her words around the same time I do, Yuko clams up and starting and starts backpedaling furiously. Uh, uh, that's different from this situation. It's totally different. Yuko stares at her nails for a second as if she really wants to bite them but is too self-conscious to do so. For instance, how long it's been. You checked out some of these books month ago, months ago, Hisao. Sorry, it's just that other people want to read them too. If you're a slow reader, that's okay, though. Nah, it's a total screw-up on my part. To be honest, I haven't even read some of them. I shouldn't keep taking out books when I have a backlog. That's not good. Yeah, it really isn't. Now I'm starting to copy her habit of trailing off quietly. Her awkwardness is very contagious for some reason. That said, I'm surprised. Yuko seems almost normal today, although every now and then her waitressy nervous tics keep popping back up. Come to think of it, she didn't act this way when I first met her. She was a little clumsy and neurotic, but it wasn't anywhere near this severe until Shizune and Misha and I ran into her at the Shanghai. It could be that Yuko has a complex about having kids from the school seeing her waitressing. I guess it was a little odd for her to pick the closest cafe to the school to work in, then. In that case, maybe the place having so few customers could be considered a lucky break. Well, I get it. I'll return them after school. As soon as possible, please. Um, wait. Can I ask you for one more thing? Sure, what is it? I... I have to go for a while. But I can't just leave the library empty. Sorry, but can I ask you to watch it while I'm gone? Just for a little bit. I'll be right back as soon as possible. You're in the student council, so I'm sure if you did it, it would be okay. Alright, I'll do it. Don't worry about... Thank you! Yuko quickly slides forward as if she's so grateful she is about to give me a hug, but sh th she stops two centimeters into it, which ultimately just makes the gesture, gesture look extremely confusing. I'm also surprised that she can control her momentum so well, since she seems kind of clumsy. Before I can say as much as you're welcome, she is already dashing off with the urgency of someone late to an appointment. That could be the case, but I wouldn't feel safe assuming so. It's Yuko, and she seems like the kind of person to treat everything that way. Now that I'm in the library, I feel a bit silly. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Should I sit down like I normally would and read? It probably it probably would do, but wouldn't, Yuko, wouldn't 
It probably would do, but wouldn't meet Yuko's high, stand high standards. Maybe I should sit at the librarian's desk and give anyone who comes in a stern and analytical glare. I use Shizune's as a starting point, then practice it a couple times in the mirrored surface of a pen. I think it looks pretty good. Frustratingly, no one comes in, so I give up on the idea quickly, and decide to just go looking for Hanako instead. It's deserted. I think I see someone, but the second I blink, whoever it is is gone. As soon as I return to Yuko's dex, desk, dex, and crap o crack, wow, crack open an interesting looking book, a familiar person swings in front of me like a falling pendulum. <gasps> Yo, librarian, I've been looking for you for like ten minutes. What? It's you? Man, you must really get around, or the student council makes you get around. Those bitches. How could they? Slave drivers! He must be exaggerating because it took me 30 seconds just to do a slow walk around the whole place. The thought is overridden by my surprise to see him. Where did you come from? What are you doing here? What? Can't a guy go to the library now? I can't even go to the library without some young buck like you giving me a third degree over it. I see some girl coming in here all the time but no one asks her what she's doing here. Is it because she reads and I don't? What, I have to read just because I'm in a library? He must be talking about Hanako. Although I suppose they both avoid people, I want to tell him that reading isn't... Reading is what you usually do in a library. So if he's not reading, whatever he's doing is bound to make him look way more suspicious than her. In the end, though, I'm too surprised by him practically appearing out of thin air. That... that doesn't tell me what you're doing here. I'm here because of you. His response makes me feel confused. Maybe I fell asleep and this is all some weird dream. And this Kenji isn't real, but really my subconscious. Is he going to start giving me deep but vaguely worded advice now? Because of you, I got chased out of my dorm by feminists. Now I wander this library like a soldier without a country, or a ghost. I should haunt you for ruining things for me. It's a shame. It would have been an interesting dream, but it seems like this is the real deal. Yeah, you had to start working with women, and that brought them to my door. You remember that? You should, since you were there. After that day, I knew they were on to me. I should have trusted my instincts, but I was young and stupid two weeks ago. That wasn't even a week ago. Then my dad called, and no one, and said one of my letters hadn't been delivered. The post office couldn't have lost it, so it must have been intercepted. Information warfare. That's when I knew my secret hideout was compromised. Now I'm on the run. Like a fugitive, it's code red. Dorm rooms aren't secret. They put your name and number on a board right in the doorway. I know. I saw that. They're diabolical. Why not just put up a big Wild West Wanted poster if they're going to be like that? Wanted. Dead or alive. Probably alive so they can clone me or turn me into a grasshopper. Jumping without warning into an empty chair opposite me, Kenji takes out a cigarette and starts spinning it between his fingers. I've never seen him smoking before, so it must be for effect. He just keeps cigarettes so that he can twirl them around while he's conversating? I can't even live where I want to anymore. This is where it all begins. Tactical brilliance. I mean, once they're in your home, it's over. Like termites. If the feminist plan for dominance starts there, where the fuck can we go? The only question is how they could take a page out of the termite playbook when women are naturally repelled by wood. What? What? What is he talking about? Women are naturally repelled by wood? What? Is that like a saying? Or is he like mixing up a saying? Or is he just talking out of the side of his neck? I, I don't, I've never heard that in my life. You can never go home again, is that how the saying goes? Man, I don't know about never. I was just there. I don't know anywhere else I can shower and get new clothes and eat and use the bathroom and watch TV. I have to keep watching the news to keep informed. For someone ousted from his dorm room and living on the run, he sure has no qualms about going back there several times a day for long periods of time. 
but by now he's slowly turned away from me and is talking to a revolving display of murder mysteries. There's really no point in interrupting him, I guess. I finish off my soda and throw the can into the basket near the door. It hits the rim, but goes in anyway. I silently pump my fist. Kenji quickly gets up and starts to head towards the door. I wasn't really paying attention. I hope I didn't fist bump at an inappropriate moment. Where are you going? You kept sucking down that juice. So? It wasn't even juice, it was soda. And it's gone now. And what do you mean sucking it down? I had two sips. Yeah, right. You had like 50 million sips. That's not even possible. Maybe for you. I go beyond the impossible all the time. Okay, whatever. Now I'm thirsty too. I'm going to get my own juice. I'll be right back. Oh god, please don't be right back. He does come almost right back, so quickly that I suspect he knows about my secret vending machine. I got you one too. Hope you like grape juice. We're even for the pizza now. Thanks, even though I'm pretty sure that that grape juice did not cost as much of a pizza as a pizza. I want to tell him that I lent him nearly ten times the cost of a can of grape juice, but that might make him seem- that might make me seem petty. On a post, Kenji sits down and starts furiously drinking juice like a man with a vendetta against grapes. Or grapes are feminine, so I must kill them! You know, it's a lucky break for me that I managed to run into you here, man. I kinda need you to do me a favor. Uh, no. Although it's cynical, I wonder if him getting me juice was so he could ask me for this favor. If so, it's very transparent and poorly timed. I doubt Kenji would think about something so deeply, though. Just asking for things straight out is more his style. I need you to recommend me some books. But I thought you didn't read. How'd you know? You told me. You said you think people discriminate against you because you don't read. Yeah, well they do. And I do read. I read audiobooks because it's the way of the future. Well also you don't have good eyesight so I imagine audiobooks is better for you. I have to read a book a month for literary studies though. And I found out that the school doesn't really accept such classics as advanced cryptography. Cryptogra cryptography. If I don't read a bunch of books, they're gonna fail me. I can't fa fail literary studies. That would make me illiterate. That would mean my mom was right. My mom can't be right. I just have to study literacy as much as possible. What about doing some extra credit? No thanks. It's bad enough I'm gonna have to carry around these stupid things now. He picks up a dictionary, flips through it, and places it on a the murder mystery rack behind him. I can't believe this is actually the medium that our ancestors used to look up, look at porn. Amazing. I spit my drink all over the book I'm still holding, damaging it beyond any hope of repair. I quickly reach, I quickly check the back to see its suggested retail price is 7,900 yen. I think I might have a heart attack. Wow, destroyed. Shouldn't have done that though. They take vandalism super seriously here. You're gonna get canned. He chortles amused before taking an extremely long loud lip from loud sip from his can of juice. It's not vandalism, I didn't do it on purpose. You made me do it with your words. What do you mean caned? I don't wanna be caned. Wait, chill out. I didn't mean they actually cane you. They just make you pay for it, and really, really yell at you. It's like they were going to bite my ass off, still. Not that big a deal. I don't care if it's figurative, I don't want to get caned, or get my ass bitten off, or any kind of punishment, you... You dumbass! What am I going to do? I'm the only person in here that she knows of. Anyway, I can't even throw the book in the trash. It'll be found and she'll know. Damn, dude. Stop being so weird. Just pay $80. Shut up. How is it weird to not want to be fine? Man, stop flipping out, man. I'm not flipping out. I'm trying to save money. So cheap. I'm about to strangle him when I hear Misha's wahaha coming up the hallway. Apparently Kenji hears it too and uses the opportunity to quickly vanish behind the autobiography section like the wind. Hi, Hee-chan. Misha shouts exuberantly, dragging an embarrassed Yuko behind her. Hey chan were you talking to yourself? On one hand, saying yes could make me look kinda crazy. On the other hand, if I blow Kenji's cover, he might go off and make me look crazy by association. Yes. <laughs> that 
that's okay. Don't be embarrassed, Hee Chan. I do it too sometimes when I'm alone. La la la. Um, nothing happened while I was gone? Absolutely nothing. I didn't just ruin this book. It smells like grapes. I'm wearing grape scented cologne. I lie brazenly and obviously from her reaction, I'm going to assume that she knows I'm lying. Or thinks I have an abysmal sense of four colognes. Since the can of grape juice I drank from is still right there, it's likely to be the former. Fortunately, she doesn't ask any follow-up questions. What are you two doing together? We had lunch together. Strictly business. A business lunch. I try to picture Misha in a suit having a business lunch with anyone. Somehow, I just can't see it. What kind of business? Risky business. You don't know? Haha, <laughs> it's nothing, nothing. It's a normal part of the student council to not know what the other is doing. I don't nothing, nothing, something like that. This, that isn't normal at all. In fact, it's bad. We're only three people. Yuko laughs nervously. She must be terrified. Misha says that you want to put posters in the library for the elections. Um, even though they're really far away, I guess it's okay. I didn't know that I could even decide those kinds of things. You can! Isn't that great? <laughs> Aren't you happy? Yay! Yay! Misha grabs Yuko's hand and forces her to clap joyously for herself. Yuko doesn't look very happy about learning that she has more responsibility and power than she previously thought. Hee-chan, since you're here, you can help me put them up! Pulling out a giant stack of posters from her bag, she cuts them in half like a deck of cards and passes me the slightly sh smushed half. Shi-chan has, really, has a really good idea. We can put some flyers inside books, too. Then even if they try to ignore us, they won't be able to. They could even be spring-loaded. Misha tries her best to convey the same tone Shizune used. It sounds close to the real thing, and also a little menacing. She was probably kidding. I liked it. No, please, not that. Oh no. This is the first time I've seen that face on Yuko. A super ultra aggressive marketing blitz. We're going to start going door to door too. That's a terrible idea. Misha pouts in her best Shizune impression, fingertips tapping together rapidly in annoyance. Hey chan you think every idea is terrible. Yeah, but that idea is too terrible. Too terrible to ignore. I can't have that. Hey Chan, that sounds like a challenge. Mutiny, mutiny. Mutiny is bad. Don't fight. Nah, ha, ha. It was just a joke. Okay. Don't fight. Ha, 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 ha. The way Yuko sounds when she's trying to be firm makes me think of a kindergarten teacher. I suppose that makes her very persuasive in her own way. Putting up the posters is surprisingly hard, simply because the library is already plastered with bulletin boards and flyers lining every couple meters. Some of them in places so unlikely that I'd, ever, that I'd never noticed them before. Deciding which of them to peel off in favor of our own adds a lot of time to an otherwise simple job. By the time the bell rings to signal the end of lunch, Misha and I still have a sizable amount of posters left. As we leave, I decide to stick one right by the door. It must be one that Misha did. It has a little drawing of Shizune at the bottom. That's a little... That's a little odd... little detail to add. That makes me feel like it's not one that Misha did. The fact that they pointed it out makes me feel like that it's one that Shizune did. After our little talk. But I guess I won't know. Maybe I will. A couple days later, Shizune heads off to go eat lunch by herself, and doesn't come back. She must really be swamped with the student council work, although I know that she probably m made most of that work for herself. When I get to the student council room, I find the door unlocked. Before opening it, I hold back for a second to see if I'll hear Misha's laughing through it. Nothing. I'd almost take that as a sign that no one's in, but Shizune wouldn't leave the door unlocked in that case. She's at her desk, sleeping in her chair with her arms folded over her chest. What a stiff pose. If it weren't for her eyes being closed, there would be no way to tell that she was asleep. In fact, I can't even be sure that she's asleep now. Normally I'd tap a desk to wake anyone else up, but it wouldn't work with her. 
I immediately start thinking of tricks I could play on her if she is sleeping. It's disappointing that my train of thought goes in those kinds of directions. Hello. Good afternoon. She signs one greeting with each hand. It's really confusing. What are you doing? Secretly slacking off? Shizune smiles but lowers her head to conceal it and tries her best to look annoyed instead. Don't just stand there. It makes me nervous if I'm sitting down and you're not. And take a seat in the nearest chair while Shizune pauses to adjust her glasses on the bridge of her nose like she's fine-tuning an instrument. Why are you so far away? Does that make you nervous too? Pursing her lips, Shizune doesn't look too amused at my taunting her. I had some free time, so I thought I would drop by and see if you were still busy. Do you want to help me? Yeah. Too bad. I am already done. I'm grateful, but it's not necessary. I just finished the last of it, and now everything that needs to be done is done. So formal. Misha was just in as business like yesterday. Are you both getting serious for official student council business? I'm always serious, like the student council candidate should be. That was fast, from zero to immediately criticizing people who aren't even in her, even her colleagues yet, before I've had the chance to stretch my legs. At least the presidents. They need initiative. Then maybe they can motivate everyone else, or at least strong arm them, strong arm them along. But even though they're a bunch, even though there's a bunch of them, they're all so wishy-washy. There's no one running for vice president, so they all want the big prize, but none of them have the right to drive for it. Have the right drive for it. And then the treasurers are always so flaky. The treasurers are always so flaky. I've decided to use my power to just eliminate the position. Wait a sec. Please. Can you even do that? I don't think it works that way. It is how it is. With that, Shizune stares grimly into the distance, rubbing the frame of her glasses. That doesn't answer the question, future dictator. I'm disappointed. They should want me out of here faster because they want the job. Or at least disagree with me having the job. If I can't mobilize a bunch of student council wannabes for either reason, all my work will have been for nothing. If they are going to be so slow about it, I'll just have to hold on to my office as long as possible. Shizune punctures the sentence with a snap of her fingers, creating a sound as sharp as a gunshot. I wonder if she knows how loud she can do that. It's definitely an attention grabber, so I could only see it as invaluable to a mute. She must, she might have practiced because of that. All of it, huh? That's too harsh. I always thought this is the real test. Leaving a lasting impression is important. It's why I don't build sandcastles. They crumble when you leave. Maybe, but if you see an especially neat one, I still think it's impressive. I'll say it's impressive. I kind of admire you, so to me it wasn't for nothing. She tugs at her glasses as if she wants to take them off, smiling wryly. Sorry. I was careless and something selfish slipped out. I've always wanted to stand at the top. It didn't matter what it was as long as I was the best at it and understood it completely and made it my own. Like when you hear a song and dream of being a musician or see a plane and wish you could be a pilot. Have you ever had a dream like that? Yeah, I uh, saw a teenager and wished that I didn't have heart problems. The first time I played soccer, I wondered if maybe I could ever get good enough to wow people. That was just a fantasy though. As soon as I saw the gap between me and people with real talent, I put those dreams behind me. And with my heart the way it is, I can't play soccer anymore anyway. Do you still have dreams like that? No, they're unrealistic. I realized it very quickly. There's always someone better. An nostalgic expression crosses her face. It looks oddly mature right now, as if the days of competing vigorously against others was for supremacy was are long behind her. Of course I know that nothing could be further from the truth. Just last week she wanted to see which one of us could blow the biggest bubble with a piece of gum. It could be that she was even worse when she was younger. A terrifying thought. I like that, that there was always someone better. When someone greater than me would appear, I'd get so excited I'd want to challenge them. Even though in the end, they would usually turn out to be better and I would be left in awe. There are some people who are on a different level completely. After a while, I got jealous. I wanted something like that for myself. Is that what the student council is? The thing just for you? No, no. Even though it feels like that sometimes, that wasn't why I decided to do it. 
That is another story entirely. But I like being student council president. Even if the work is hard and I'm always biting off more than I can chew, that is what keeps it exciting. People at the top shouldn't be able to be comfortable at all the time anyway. You sound like a farmer. Does she? Are these farmer words? Them farmer words. Although they, although they wouldn't suit her, Shizune would look cute in overalls and a straw hat. I don't think what she usually I don't think her casual wear suits her, honestly. So, if that wasn't the reason, why did you run for the job? I didn't, but afterwards I decided to stick with it anyway. I wanted to be the student council president because the old student council was stupid. And I want to stir people up so that they will be able to say, that was interesting, today was interesting, that kind of thing. Memorable experiences. I'm happy because I think we succeeded, you and Misha and me. I have a selfish desire too, though. At first it was something I thought would only be a nice bonus, but I've gotten greedy. That is why it would make me happy if the elections go smoothly. It would be the only way that I could see... The only way that I could see that my wish w was granted. What is it then? It's a secret. Sensing that I might not be able be ready to let such a weak dodge slide by so easily, Shizune quickly waves down any attempt at a follow-up, embarrassment coloring her face. It's something she wants to keep to herself only because it's too silly to do otherwise. I start to feel a pang of hunger and check my watch. It's earlier than it looks. Too early for dinner. Do you have any kind of food in your desk? Meh. For a second, it looks like the question confuses her, but she recovers quickly. Desks are for supplies. Food is supplies. You should have eaten lunch. I didn't think it would be a problem if I didn't. If I was working, I wouldn't have to think about it. I'd be too busy to be hungry. She puts her hand up into her mouth in a poor attempt to conceal a laugh and tries to hide it further by pretending to use it to push her glasses further up the bridge of her nose. I guess you're not, since you already ate. I'm not good enough to sign the appropriate words, so I settle for pointing at the stack of Chinese food containers leading precariously out of the top of the trash can. Those are from yesterday. Then we're both hungry. Let's get something to eat. Not from the cafeteria. There wasn't anything good at lunch, so I really doubt there will be anything good left over. Order something? Ordering out two days in a row is unnatural. Only in case of emergencies. This is my personal policy. This is why she should think of putting some snacks on her desk. It would be an easier way of dealing with these kinds of emergencies. I want her. I want to tell her, but signing out how hungry I am like five times has made me too tired to be a smartass. Temptation is really great, though. Hi, hi, hi! Misha's distinctive up and down voice starts muff sounds muffled through the door. She bursts in a second later. Mm -hmm. Hey Chen, you're here too. Two? How did you know there was already someone in here? If it opens, someone is inside. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Shizune shakes her head. <laughs> great, that's really great. But I was sure I would be. Is this a break? I thought so too, but it turns out everything student council related is over, for now. Is that why you're here? Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's right, he chan Sorry to disappoint you, we were just discussing whether or not to order out for dinner. <laughs> that sounds fun. Shizune isn't being very fun about it, though. She says that she can't order food two days in a row. Are you hungry too? Because if you are, we could outvote her. That sounds fun, Hee-chan, and I am a little hungry. I thought you would say it sounds like mutiny. Shizune pinches the frame of her glasses, clearly thinking that it does seem like mutiny. But being outvoted by a clean 2 to 1 margin, there's nothing she can do. Misha already has her phone out. It's awfully garish. Hee-chan, you promised we would have a student council thing just for us, right? 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 This can be it! Shizune only shakes her head. The last party she will be able to attend as Yamaku student council president is too special to her to put that label on our spur of the moment early dinner. Even though I'm sure the real thing will be just like this, a meal like any other with the three of us. After we finish eating and clean up, I say goodbye to them and head to my dorm. Although I don't feel particularly tired, I think I'll just go straight to sleep tonight. 
If I were back home, my mom would nag me not to go to bed right after eating. But what she doesn't know won't hurt her. I take a look at the clock as soon as I get in and realize it's a lot later than I thought. It also feels a bit silly checking the clock when I have a phone and a wristwatch. I take off my watch and hold it in one hand while holding my phone in the other. It makes me feel powerful and stupid. I try unsuccessfully to go to sleep and am glad when someone interrupts me by knocking on my door. Only in by knocking on my door after only a few minutes. I figure that it couldn't be anyone but Kenji, which is why I'm surprised when it ends up being Misha. Hi, Hee-chan. You don't look happy to see me. No, I'm just kind of surprised. Did Shizune remember something that she wants me to do after all? It's late, but whatever. I guess it's good that I didn't change. Nope, I just thought I'd follow you back, Hee-chan. For fun? No, of course not. It's because she wants to talk. It must be about something important, and something she doesn't want Shizune to know about. Do you want to come in? Yeah, thanks, Hee-chan. She walks in and immediately takes a seat in a chair. The natural thing to do, but I'd expected her to sit on the bed. Hee-chan. Misha frowns harshly, arms folded over her chest. It's like she's trying to play a grim interrogator. All that's missing is the mustache and the dangling, flickering light bulb in on a string. Did you make Shi-chan sad? What? What do you mean? When I went to the office today, Shi-chan couldn't hear me coming. That's why. When I opened the door, I saw a really confusing expression on her face. Shi-chan looked happy and sad, and I wanted to know why. Well, it wasn't because of me. I didn't even see it. I think she's depressed that she won't be student council president anymore in a few months. Hmm. When I asked Shi-chan about it, she said that it was okay. That's meaningless. Shizune would say that, but it's ridiculous to think that she would let it go that easily. I mean, there are times when she'll want to fight me over the last apple or chocolate milk or whatever, and that is stuff that doesn't even matter. Chocolate milk is important! I agree. Okay, it is. Don't get mad. But not as much as student council is to her. She wouldn't just wave it off so easily. Hahaha, <laughs> you're right! I thought this was supposed to be an interrogation, but it appears Misha has already forgotten about it. But I don't want Shi-chan to lie to me to make me feel better. Ha ha ha. Most people don't know how serious Shi-chan is and think she's just putting on a show. I'm happy that you understand her, Hee-chan. It's obvious, especially with how she talked about it today. Misha leans in closer with interest, resting her head on her palms. Really? What did she say? They are close enough that I don't think much of how she is prying. Why she joined the student council, sort of. She started, but then decided that some stuff should just stay classified. And signed, it's a secret, so I guess that's what she told me. It's a secret. Well, if someone tells you they have a secret, you can sort of call that a secret by itself, Hee-chan. Just like how, according to you, luck is a skill. It can be. <laughs> be careful, not so loud. Why, Hee-chan? You're going to wake up half the people in the building, and on top of that, dorms aren't co-ed. Hee-chan, are you thinking something dirty? Stop being weird. Ha <laughs> ha If you are, it's okay, I think. Hearing that makes me realize how easy it's been for me to talk to Misha all this time. That I would be able to go this long without feeling the need to be on guard. This is the first time I have. I feel sad, Hee-chan. It's funny, the happier Shi-chan gets, the more depressed I feel. Even though I should be happy for Shi-chan, I still am. But, I can't talk about my problems with her. Why not? Just like Shi-chan can't talk about her problems to me, it's the same thing, Hee-chan. If we have that kind of problem, then I'm not sure anymore what I should do. I wonder, am I a bad friend? Misha gets up and quickly drops herself on the bed until we're sitting only a few inches apart. Just a couple seconds later, she pushes her head forward and gives me a light kiss. It misses my lips more due to bad aim on her part than because of me. What are you doing? Although it's just a formality, I'd be stupid to not know what she's getting at. It's just that it seems so unlikely that I'm hoping there will be some way I won't have to deal with it. Now she decides to be shy and giggles and... Giggles? Embarrassed. Hmm. Do you like me, Hee-chan? Yeah. Her head is buried in my chest. It feels like she's talking into my scar. 
She might be able to feel it brushing against her cheek. I tried too hard to hide it from both of them before. It seems like such a dumb thing to have worried so much about in retrospect. Please comfort me, Hee-chan. Just for today. Uh-oh. I'm... I'm... Misha. I am... I'm taken. This is, uh... This is wrong. We can't do this. Would this actually... Does this actually lead to something? Or is it just... Is it just a debate? I'm gonna refuse it regardless. But... I'm, wait, I'm gonna save. 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 Not tongue-tied. Not that word. That makes me feel like something would happen if, if I say yes. I'm gonna have to refuse... Uh, Misha, number one, you, you, I've seen, I've seen your taste in either fashion or politics, and, uh, I don't know about all that, ma'am. You seem too silly to, for that to be an ironic shirt. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I make it a policy not to stick my dick in crazy. You know? I really do. Refuse. Before I can answer, she pushes her whole weight against me, and it unbalances me enough to send us both onto the bed. If I don't answer quickly, then the situation will all only become more precarious. I know I should have never let things get as tangled as they already are. So even though it isn't the most tactful way to refuse her, I push her off of me. Misha falls backward onto the sheet so softly that it seems like she barely fell at all. Eyes closed, she stays like that for a while, before getting up with a hollow laugh. Ha ha ha. All right, he chan I'm sorry. Did I just die? I'm not sure how I feel. Regretful slightly, even though I've grown to hate regret. Sad for a multitude of reasons. I'm also a little angry, both at her and at myself, and in a way. It even seems like I'm not really feeling at all. Don't be. No, he chan It's okay. I'm really, really... But... Just asking was enough for me, I think. I'm happier that you said no. Is that right? Well, that's good. Yeah, it is. Thanks, Hee-chan. She pulls herself up and leans against the wall. I'm assuming she is. Her, my head hurts so, so much that I don't bother opening my eyes. I lie on my bed listening to the rustle of my hair brushing against the sheets and the grass waving in the wind outside. I guess that I should say more to reassure her, but I wonder if that would really help. Maybe it would be better to say nothing. I just don't know, although I think that in this situation there's no one right thing to, I can do. Good night, Hee-chan. With that, she leaves, the door clicking shut behind her like a guilty whisper. Maybe it's because I'm eager to put today behind me, but after Misha's gone I find it much easier to fall asleep. I do so almost instantly. Okay. I think I could have slept with Misha there if I wanted to. But I'm not gonna be that way. I'm not gonna be a cheater cheater pumpkin either. That's just not cool. And I've already gotten so close to Shizune. I say this and then after I get the route that I get, I'm gonna go right back and I'm gonna fuck Misha. I'm gonna do it. I have to, for the sake of getting 100% on this game. I'm too far in it to stop. We're far past beyond the point of not 100%ing this game. Okay, well. I saved it there, and I'm gonna save it here. Okay. I don't know how this is gonna go down, but uh, we will see Surely that is a big choice. That has to be. We uh, it's gotta. We will see. The the repercussions of my actions, in the next episode of. Kanto Wata Shoujo. Don't put your dick in crazy. And I will see you guys then. Bye.